So I kept this example from the previous video, except I kind of reduced our result set there. I want to show you the basics of what the compiler does here with these these uh, comprehensive syntaxes, freeform, whatever you want to call it. Okay, because this is not going to work on the CLR level. This is not even close to missile. There's a lot of sugar compiler sugar going on, and I'm okay with sugar uh, as long as I understand what's going on. The compiler can do all it wants for me as long as I'm a big boy and uh, I'm a professional and can understand and go in there and fix things or break. So let me show you what the compiler does. First of all, the compiler looks at this query and it does it in stages. I'm going to just walk you through the stages. I'm going to var result. I'm going to call it result2, and I'm not quite sure why it uh, didn't and indented this kind of weird, but all right. So first step the compiler does is it looks at this line and it doesn't translate this line to anything. It's just an analysis and says, well, we have a source called numbers and a variable called n. So from here on out, whenever I need a variable, I will or a variable name, I'll put n, and when I need a source, I'll say numbers. Okay. So this line doesn't really translate to anything. All right. So the very first thing it's going to do is define the oopsie. It's going to define the source here, numbers. All right. Remember, we got that from here. And then we're going to say dot. Oh, it feels good. We have a dot again. I'm feeling more like a programmer. All right. And then all the compiler does is it doesn't look at what where means or anything. It's just uppercase. Control shift U, make it an uppercase. Drop a parenthesis out here. And then it needs to put its variable name there. Well, do you remember what the variable name is? I could look here, but that's not where the compiler looks. The compiler keeps that from this previous line. So it puts a variable name n, and then lambda expression, n, n less than 5, and a parenthesis. Okay, I didn't really interpret, and neither does the compiler interpret what where means. It just, literally, it does all these fix-ups. Dot, uppercase, parenthesis, variable name, arrow, closing parenthesis. All right, now it sees the select and says, oh, I understand select. I'm going to do roughly the same thing. Dot, uppercase parenthesis, variable, arrow, close it with another parenthesis. Okay, now this should hopefully start to feel a little bit more like home. In fact, it wasn't a very large step to go from this freeform comprehensive syntax to, oh, we got dots and parentheses again. That feels good. But last time I checked, numbers here is an array, and numbers does not have a where method. All right, so watch what happens. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to comment out this using. You notice we get some red squigglies now. In fact, we got a red squiggly here on numbers and our comprehensive syntax. Then we got a red squiggly here saying, "Hey, array system dot array does not contain the definition for where and no extension method." Blah 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 blah. All right, no extension method. There's the key concept. And if you don't remember how extension methods work, go look at the extension methods video. Using system dot link, I'm going to bring that back in and notice the red squigglies go away. So there must be an extension method somewhere in this namespace that satisfies an array and it's named where. Okay, so I'm going to click on this. I'm going to hit F12. Let's go see if we can find it. it looks like I already had it open. Uh, okay, here it is. Where. It returns an I enumerable. Let's look at the extended argument, the this argument. It's an I enumerable. Well, last time I checked, array was I enumerable. What's the T source? The T source is an int. Okay, remember, we're sending numbers. Numbers is an I enumerable of int. So our T source back here is, is an int. Then it takes this func. The second argument is a func. And if you remember from the func video, I'll just F12 on func. Func's a delegate. It's a generic delegate. There's uh, like 16 versions of func, but basically it's just... It takes something and returns something. So it's taking a T, which in our case is an int. It takes an int. And it's returning a T result. Well, let's look at what the what, what T result here is. It's a Boolean. Okay? N rightfully named predicate. We're going to predicate upon some Booleans. Oh, that sounds very technical. Don't let it be uh, scary to you. All right? Let's just, let's, it's, it's rather straightforward. We're going to send each one of these ints one by one to the func, which is this lambda expression, this this delegate here that we're referencing, or the lambda expression. Yeah, go watch the lambda videos if you really need to pick this apart. But basically, this is what our delegate is referencing, and, and less than 5, that's our predicate. Okay, so each one of these numbers, 1 by 1, 2, 2 less than 5, 4, 4 less than 5, 9, 9 less than 5, so on and so forth, we're going to pass to this predicate. 
Now where? Let's. I'm gonna hit F12 again on where. Where returns an I enumerable. All right. So so this whole expression I'm highlighting right here returns an I enumerable. And then we turn around and dot on that I enumerable and say select. Well, let me look at it. Select here. I'll click on select. Hit F12. Select. Oh, look at its argument here. Its extended argument is an I enumerable. So that's kind of nice how that kind of chained out there. We got where and it filters some data and then we have select and it selects some data. So let's go here and I'm going to say for each int result in or let's just do int i in result to console right line i. In fact I'm going to do that one and then I'm also going to show result one. So we'll see result uh, well we'll just see yeah result one I'm going to put a one out here one all right, result one, result one. We're going to look through result one, and it'll look the same as result two. And I'm going to put a white line right there so we can see the difference between the two. So look here, two, four, four, two, two, four, four, two. Okay, so that's that's the um, first step in translating these these uh, freeform syntax into into uh, something we're used to here, extension method syntax. So literally the compiler just throws some dots in here, uppercase is this. I want to, let's just roll this all the way out and hopefully this is review from previous videos. If not, um, go watch the extension method video and the lambda expressions video in my other play playlist. But again, this is still sugar, very high sugar. This doesn't work on a missile level. So we need to, we need to actually take this numbers and paste it as the first argument to our where. And then where it was contained in an enumerable class. Not I enumerable. Don't get the two mixed up. It's enumerable. All right. In fact, I'm going to hit F12 again on where just so you can see it. Here's where. All right. Notice there's a whole bunch of these we're going to explore. But if I go to the top of this, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Ah, enumerable. And all this class is is a wrapper for a bunch of extension methods. If you look, each one of these is an extension method. Uh, and I believe all of them are on I enumerable. See all these I enumerables here? This, 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 this. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll look at those in a minute. But anyway, result three. Um, I'm going to get rid of this line here. And then, well, all this, this returns an I enumerable, which we extend again. It's an extension method to select. So I actually have to copy this whole thing, highlight, cut. I'm going to drop it right here as the first argument to select. Put a comma there. And then this is just enumerable again. Okay? So let me uh, actually format this a little bit so you can see it. Where numbers less than 5, select from that result, and to n. Okay, so let's, let's print out result 3 as well. I'm going to result 3 here. Okay. Excuse the sniffles. Look, you can see 2442, 2442, 2442. This is great. We're, now this is this is legit. A static method call. I can do that on the missile level, the CLR level. That's 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 fine. Okay. Now again, we have these lambda expressions, which aren't fine. They're they're not native to the CLR, so we actually have to have to desugarize these. But I'm not going to do that in this video. It's getting kind of long already. So, but you can pull these out, make them regular methods. If you don't remember how to do that, reference the lambda expressions video. But there you go. That, that's that's the rough translation of what the compiler is doing here from our freeform syntax to this syntax, so on and so forth.